Hi there and welcome back to Japan where I'm giving my final conclusive thoughts on the rather fantastic Band Micro EP. There's a lot to say about this one actually. Something's good, something's bad, but a lot of things to break down from it anyway. And it's just something I've been so excited to listen to that I'm just really happy that I have now heard it. Now, if you aren't aware, we already did a track by track before this. Welcome if you're coming straight from that, but if you haven't heard that, go back. There's a playlist in the description below which will show you all the tracks we've listened to in a play-by-play -play, uh, form uh, in order from this EP. But what an interesting EP this is. Um, seven tracks as far as I'm aware, the first six being uh, re-envisionings of tracks they've done before, and then Gion Show, the last uh, song on the album, I believe was written specifically for the band Micro Experiment. Um, as you guys know, but let's cover it if you, just in case you don't, band made of course being an absolutely stellar, fantastic all-female rock band from Japan who are amazing instrumentalists and you know some of the literally on their own particular instruments some of the best in the world they got a solid rhythm guitarist as well who's the band former who's the, by far the most junior musician but she holds it together brilliantly um, and their songwriting's pretty damn solid as well they've come up with some really fantastic songs in their time and um so going into this, this was an interesting uh, example, an interesting opportunity for them, as they've often been shoehorned by the fact they're hard rock, and I feel they really do feel the need to appease the, that will keep that knowledge with their fans don't worry we're hard rock stay with us we're part of that scene but they are so good that they can play with other things you know we've heard this sometimes when they step outside of their normal sound they do some fantastic things by just peering into other genres a little bit more and uh, Bam Michael was an interesting opportunity it started off as an April Fool's joke as you guys have told me in the comments where they basically changed their usual hard rock dressed in made out you know Akihabara made outfits hard rock uh, sound and exchanged it for basically being traditional Japanese style and you know changed the name from band to band, band made to band Maiko it's a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a joke and then like I say re-envisaged for the best part re their own songs with traditional Japanese instruments thrown in as you guys know that's a sound I really love I've mentioned it a few times in this track by track but I'll mention it again obviously the gold standard with that in my opinion is band Michael who are a much bigger band I'm uh, sorry band Michael a wagaki band <laughs> much bigger band doing basically what band Michael is a little bit of a play on which is having traditional Japanese uh, musicians in the same band as a rock band and all playing together that's kind of what Wagaki band do and they fuse it beautifully now when it comes to the uh, band Maiko sound they didn't use traditional Japanese instruments uh, uh, or instrumentalists what they did is they used a sort of a sound font so like I've, as I've mentioned before you imagine you have your fonts for typing your different styles of lettering you have sound fonts which is basically instruments you can play through a keyboard and often they're constructed by note by note recordings of the original instruments so when you play it if you play it on a keyboard or program it into a computer in a similar way to how someone would actually play it on the real instrument then it's virtually indistinguishable from the real thing which is a really fantastic tool to have if you don't have the time money or inclination to go and uh, order yourself a whole room of session musicians they're not cheap especially on specialist ethnic instruments even in japan so <laughs> So with uh, this CD, it's been something where they could have gone many different ways about that. Now, when it comes to programming the uh, sounds of a traditional Japanese instruments, they've done some really interesting stuff. They've really done full on. There's so much going on. They've got shamisens, which is like the big Japanese style. Uh, so, oh, sorry, that's the like uh, Japanese style, uh, like banjo almost. You've got the koto, which is the big like Japanese style harp. It's like having a table and you play it like this. And the shakuhachi, which is the flute sounding instrument. Now these are the main three uh, traditional instruments in, uh, in Japanese music with exception to the taiko drum but they're the main three melodic instruments and they've done a really great job of inter uh, sort of putting them into the uh, arrangements you know making them frenetic making them energetic making them fill in a lot of space. Now my biggest problem with this album as you might remember me mentioning if you have been in listening to a track by track is that I felt a lot of the time like band made themselves weren't really having to pull their punches you know they were kind of like almost playing the songs in their original format and then trying to shoehorn these Japanese sounds in around them and that didn't really work in every single place the sound was still great it was still filled up your headphones and it was Still brilliant but it kind of felt like some of the really great work they've done on writing these parts for the Japanese instruments was lost underneath just hearing them play the original on their normal instruments so I kind of said when I was getting to a few tracks through like the best thing they could really do and they did this in some of the tracks um, notably in uh, the YOLO the version of YOLO and in Screaming which is to get the guitars and just pull them down in the mix make them a bit quieter and it's in the songs where they do that where it works uh, the songs where the guitar is kind of kept in as a memory for how the original goes rather than used to sort of blast your ears in this version that's where it works because 
doing this differently, doing an experimentation where you go into a different sound is something which is supposed to add to the original. You're not copying the original, you're just trying to add to it, you're trying to add a different perspective. So the ones where you could hear those um, newly added instruments and the familiar band made sounds were pulled back a little bit, that's fine. Now, as I also said, and I think this is a big point, by dressing totally different, changing your image, changing your band name for one EP, you are giving your excuse self an excuse to go full for it. If anything, any sign that you're half-assing it is a very negative thing because it kind of shows that you were scared to do it. I'm not saying they were scared to do it, but on some tracks on this, I feel like yes, that's it. They're really kind of like going gunning for the full music creativity. And on some of them, I kind of felt like, is this something that you were really happy with? You, you know, were you happy to? do this um, and you know I I think that a lot of that in my opinion came down to the way it was mixed um, I I'm assuming I haven't actually checked but I, as far as I'm aware band may don't produce and mix their own music they get involved mainly with writing recording and performing and basically doing the musicians the creative part as we would normally think of it but when it comes to the mixing I get the feeling whoever did it assumedly not themselves kind of let them down uh, on some songs it works but I think they should have more guts to turn more of the original band made sounds down because Actually, probably an interesting point to bring to this is that I've been referring to it almost like band made is the original sounds and the extra mic or sounds are not so much, you know, are, are like the additional things that might alienate fans, not so much what you would associate with being band made. But as far as I'm aware, band made wrote those extra sounds to go into these songs. This is their experimentation. And therefore, what they've written, even if it's for a, a computer programmed sound or a keyboard fed in sound, it's still them, it's their creative output. They creatively decided to write it that way. And therefore, when that's what's making this new, and that's what's making this an EP rather than just a sort of bizarrely chosen greatest hits, that is when you need to say, okay, well, those are new elements, let's focus on them. And that's why I think the engineers let them down here, because the engineer has not given enough space in the EQ, in the equalizer, for those sounds to stand out. They're often shoehorned into the high ends of the sound, really, really plinky plunky sounds, where they stand out for being sharp, but you can't hear the body of the instruments. You can't hear, like, when the is playing, or the shamisen, it just sounds like a, a twang. You don't hear the body of the instrument as it would do if they were mixed into more of a, a middle ground in the equalizer and the guitar was maybe sort of brought up to the high end and you know the volume was brought down. Um, yeah, sorry, it was me getting a bit technical. Uh, for some people that's maybe not technical enough, for some people it's maybe too technical. I'm going to try and keep this straight, e laced and easy to follow. But yeah, there were just sort of a lot of moments where I felt like this was technically you know, they could have been more technically done. On Bandmaid's actual part, I think the only thing that they maybe could have done is maybe rewrite their parts a little bit. So taking some of the heavy guitar strumming, which never, you know, when you've got heavy guitar strumming on electric guitar in any song, it doesn't leave room for anything other than drums, bass, and vocals. So with that, um, unless the guitars are really turned down, with that, I think they could have maybe rewritten some of the rhythm guitar lines to go from being like strumming to maybe just sort of a backbeat, chunk, chunk, or a, just on the beat, sort of like a stab, like a bump. Um, something like that. Was that more accessible? Less technical, maybe? Um, so, <laughs> sorry, like I say, I, I try to make this appealing for the fact that we've got such a range of people who follow these. I really appreciate it. So please tell me in the feedback if I'm talking nonsense again. But um, I think there could have been uh, differences in how they played it. I know in certain sections on this, they removed, uh, in certain sections of some of the songs, they removed guitar completely to give room for something totally different. And, you know, there were some places where they did do things like that. But I think there could have been more changes done maybe i mean i know when they uh, did world domination their recent full length album they were a bit pressured in the studio and it's quite a possibility that they didn't have much chance considering this was mainly a sort of a, a joke project for the fans it's quite possible they did not have any time to work on this or maybe they even worked on it on the road so I don't know 100%, but I do feel like the only thing that really lets this down is when I hear it and knowing that it's one of those experimentations, I hope they come back, I hope they do Bam Michael, but you don't know and there's certainly no pressure for them to do more Bam Michael, that I can't help but feeling like I hope this wasn't a wasted opportunity, something that they, as knowingly good songwriters and musicians, could have done better, but kind of maybe pulled a few punches on. Nonetheless though, the main thing is, we come out of this with some really good tracks. Now, I'm going to point this out first of all. Like I say, Screaming was, as in my opinion, stands alongside the original. It's a different version. I wouldn't say it was better or worse. It was just kind of a very different way of hearing the same thing. So that was a great song. 
Um, Gyoncho, I think, is a real fantastic one. As far as I'm aware, it's the only song originally written for this album, and I just think that's brilliant. Um, and that's the one where they kind of fused the big sound best, because it was written to be what it was. And I, I really love that one. To me, that's worth buying the CD just for that track. But also, it's worth mentioning, um, I'm gonna have to try and remember which one it was now. I think it's the one I have trouble saying. Ak uh, Akasima Hen, Akasima Hen. Again, English characters written downwards is a very difficult way to read Japanese. So Akasima Hen, I think that's the one, where they basically pulled everything out of the verses and it was just the Japanese sound with Saiki's voice. That was a really great one because, yeah, I know it's probably the least band made one on there, but it's the one where they really, really jumped in on the experimentation. You still had the choruses with the guitars and the sort of pumping sounds, but they really gave room for the Japanese stuff to breathe and for you to hear band made sounding like band Mike or sounding like something different. That was a fantastic element of exper experimentation there, and I really enjoyed that. Um, then, you know, there were other tracks on there. I mean, like I say, YOLO, a lot like Screaming, I think was just a very different way of re-envisioning it, and I was happy they turned down the guitars and gave room for that to breathe. That was great. Uh, other ones which were a bit difficult, Ansan started off as a really good idea. At the time, I loved how they took the acoustic from the original and you know, mixed it with Japanese sounds, but it kind of felt like, you know, even with the acoustic, they could have drawn that back or played the acoustic differently. And there were just points in it, you know, going from its light beginnings where it's up to its crescendo. It was hard to know that the Japanese instruments really fit in all the way through. At some points they were working, at some points they weren't, but it did start in the end analysis and after thinking about it, it just kind of perhaps felt like a wasted opportunity there. And very much the same to be said as well for the, uh, I'm actually not sure what those kanji mean, but the what, <laughs> the one and only uh, version on here, which stands at track two. That's another one where I was kind of thinking to myself, okay, yeah, but for a slightly different reason there, it's just because that song of the original had so much in it anyway that doing the band Michael version, there was no room to put anything new into it, and they didn't seem too willing to take too much out, so you end up with a song that was really filled. The breakdowns, it kind of worked, but for the best part, that was just a little bit too much was crammed in, and it didn't really get a chance for anything to breathe properly. Um, and of course, going back to uh, Secret Michael Lips, that was really good as well. Some slightly strange things with a Shakuhachi in that, but as that was that's a very small uh, nitpick that one worked really well so if i'm being honest with this you've got at least uh for a seven track ep which is an experiment by a group which is being done very tongue-in-cheek as well you've got at least two songs in here which i think are absolutely fantastic and worth the price on their own even though it's a very expensive ep they are kind of work worth the price on its own you've got at least three more tracks that I think are really, really just sort of good versions of songs you already know, really enjoyable, really add something new. And you've got two that I would consider to be kind of a bit skipper, you know, they just kind of don't gel, they don't work 100%. So despite my nitpicking maybe sounding a bit strong, overall I would say this is a positive album for what it is, for say, I mean, let's face it, the only people who are gonna buy this are people who are already fans. And if you're already a fan, I think you're gonna get something great from it. It's gonna give you a different version on songs they've already done, it's gonna give you their take on their own songs, and it gives you a fresh new song as well. It's just something which I think for fans, it's really great. I would perhaps say though, when you're playing to your fans and your fans already know your songs, I think the only way this could have been improved is if they'd gone a little bit more for the experiment, gone a little bit more 100%, been a little bit more willing to take away from what had originally been written into these songs and replace more of it with new things. But that's just my opinion. I think the, the bottom line that we should all take away from this is just, wouldn't it be better if more bands had the guts to do this? the gut to actually, um, I mean, like I say, I, don't get me wrong, they could have done more, but they had the guts to do this in the first place. The guts to, you know, present themselves in a completely different light, to add things to their songs that maybe people would have not liked, to have an opportunity for someone like me, who's a fan of both those, both those sounds that they've combined, to sit down and nitpick it to give a critical opinion, they've opened themselves up to that. And I think that is extremely laudable. That's something we need to see more of in music. We need to see bands more willing to take these kind of risks. And it's a good way to do it. If you're taking the risk by taking, you know, doing a different version of your own music, you're taking your own songs and doing them a different way. As I've said a few times in this track by track, doing a different version doesn't erase the original so long as people know that you're saying, this is just a temporary little different version we've done for fun. So, you know, I think that they are leading the way in just, you know, having the right attitude. 
and um, I really enjoyed this. Like I say, it's not to say that I can't think of any ways it would be better. I don't think it was a perfect experimentation, but it's an experimentation I'm so glad they did. It's one I hope they do again. I hope it's a reoccurring little joke that they keep going. I know they've had two years on the trot where they've done something bam Michael-y for April Fool's Day, but I just want them to keep with this because I'm really enjoying it and I hope you guys are as well. But get in the comments, let me know. Let me know what you think of this total album. Did you have best tracks, worst tracks? Was anything you really want to skip? Anything you don't like? Don't Think work anything you think is much better than the original what's your feelings on all of it like i say you can check out the full track by track by getting into uh the details for this video and seeing there's a link there for it you can get involved in the comments like subscribe all that stuff or unlike if you want but don't unlike unless you leave a comment as well or feel free to check out any of our other reviews of band made track by tracks of albums other bands you know all that kind of stuff it's all there, and we really appreciate you tuning in and listening today. But for now, from Japan, thank you so much. i really so glad you guys listened to me waffle. But you have a lovely day, and I'll see you on whatever video you choose to click next, if it's one with me in. Ciao for now.